morning students welcome to online teaching session of academic world school bemetra uh, one suggestion is here take out a notebook and pen so that you can write the important points so today we are going to study about rational number this is our today's topic it's the first chapter of class 8 so in rational number what we are going to study is a definition of rational number and its properties so two things we are going to focus on one is the definition of rational number and the other one is the its properties so before we start rational number i would like to go through the some of the important terms which will come across so first we'll see number see we are all aware that the number is very important part of our day to day life so the number is nothing but the alphabet uh, the it's a representation of values with the help of some notation and the number you will find out that there are two types one is a real another is a not real so real means which ex actually exist and the not real means which actually doesn't exist and in real number you will see there are two types one is with the decimal another is without the decimal so first i'd like to uh, describe about the numbers which are without decimal which we have already studied in our previous classes so without decimal uh, it's a natural number whole number and fraction and if you see the natural number you will find there are two types one is the prime number another is the composite number this is uh, we have already studied uh, but again i will just go through it the natural number we know that which exists in nature and we say that it start from 1 the number the it's a group of number we say the set of number set of number which start from 1 and goes to infinity and it has two types prime and composite prime numbers uh which has a uh which has only two factors the one the which means the number can be divided by one and itself then comes the composite number the other num the number other than prime they all are composite numbers then next comes the whole number so when what happens before the before the whole number before discovering zero we had only one set of numbers which is called natural number but when the zero was discovered we made a new set which comes under the whole number which means the whole number starts from zero and goes till infinity then comes the fraction and then comes the integer so integer now after zero we discovered negative numbers and positive numbers so those are all kept in the integers so integer is a set of or group of numbers which includes zero negative numbers and positive numbers and fraction fraction is a number which is written in the form of p by q where q is a p and q are whole numbers and q is not equal to 0 so these are the numbers without decimal now let's come to the numbers with decimals so they actually this the numbers with decimals we can categorize into three category one is the terminating another is the non terminating repeating then non terminating non repeating now terminating decimals those num those decimals which terminates means after decimal uh there are no any other values means the number cannot be divided further now in non terminating repeating you will see uh, the number which are not actually terminated okay but there will be certain uh place uh, in the decimal 
which will be repeating itself. Then comes the non-terminating and non-repeating. The non-terminating means which is not the number which is not terminating and non not repeating means after decimal places the numbers are not getting uh, repeated. So these are the different types of real numbers. Now, so here in this group, in this group, this whole group can be called as rational number and this also rational number so we have studied the definition of rational number in class 7 so definition says a number which can be written in the form of p by q number which can be written in the form of p by q where where p and Q are integers. Remember that. P and Q are integers and Q is not equal to 0. It's a very important condition here. It's a very, very important. Q should never be 0 because see that we are talking that what kind of number can P and Q be? P and Q should be integers and we know that in integers due also comes but here the condition is important condition is that q should not be equal to 0 okay for example example of rational numbers like uh, 1 2 3 minus 1 minus 2 2 by 3 4 by 5 minus 4 by 3 these all are the examples of rational number. Now, see that we are talking, we are saying that in the definition that number should be in the form of p by q. You will amaze that I have not written these numbers in the form of p by q, but still they are rational number. It's because we know that uh, if any number divides 1, the result doesn't change, which means this 1 can be written as 1 by 1. 2 can be written as 2 by 2 by 1, 3 can be written as 3 by 1, minus 1 can be written as minus 1 by 1. So in that way, this forms this uh, P by Q and these all are the this, uh, these all are the integers also. And here 2 by 3, it's already in the form of P by Q. So it's a rational number 4 by 5, that's also in the in the form of P by Q minus 4 by 3 that's also in the form of p by q so now one important question is here look at that in, in the example i have not written 0 so are you not wondering whether 0 will come under the rational number or not now you think and tell me that 0 will come under the rational number or not now if you see that, as I told in the uh, in the beginning itself, that one is the division identity, which means if we divide any number by one, it will not change the result. The number will re remain same. So, if you think in this number about this number, that zero can zero be written in the form of p by q or not? I will tell yes, because if you divide 0 by 1, it will give you the form of p by q. So obviously, 0 is a rational number here. To be a rational number, only one important condition you have to keep in mind, that is the q. q means the denominator of the number should not be equal to 0. Right? So it's very really clear now that any number which is in the form of p by q where the q is not equal to 0 is a rational number. Now, so in that way, 0 is also a rational number. Now, as I told, these all are the group of rational number. Here, terminating decimal, 
and non-terminating non and repeating decimal that is also rational number now here comes natural number as I told natural number starts from 1 so 1 to infinity they all are the rational number whole number starts from 0 so from 0 to infinity all are the rational number integer that is also obviously a rational number now because every integer can be written in the form of p by q and whole number that is also can be written in the form of p by q a fraction yeah fraction is already in the form of p by q and the condition given in the uh, I told that q should not be equal to 0 and p and q in the form in the case of fraction it's a whole number so fraction is also a rational number now I can say this one like this that every natural number is a rational number every whole number is a rational number every fraction is a rational number every integer is a rational number but can we say that every rational number is a natural number every rational number is a whole number every fraction every uh, rational number is a fraction every integer is a fraction no we cannot say because every rational number cannot be rational number because in rational number the negatives also comes and the positive numbers also comes and zero also comes which we don't find in the case of natural number so every rational number cannot be natural number every rational number cannot be whole number every rational number cannot be fraction every rational number cannot be integers also right now here all the terminating decimals they are rational number and all the non-terminating non-repeating decimal they are also rational number now you are wondering what is the terminating decimal suppose we write 0 0.2 okay 0 0.2 which is not further going so 0 0.2 is a terminating decimal but if I write here 0 0.333 and so on now look at here this is non-terminating and repeating decimal now this number 3 is repeating okay itself so this is non-terminating and repeating decimal now non-terminating non-repeating decimal now root under 2 root under 3 okay these all are non-terminating non-repeating decimal so <coughs> the terminating decimal and non-terminating repeating decimal that also comes under the rational number now so you remember that definition of rational number is a number which is in the form of p by q where where p and q are integers and q should not be equal to 0 which is a very important condition here okay so that we have to keep in mind we cannot say every number as a rational number if q becomes 0 then it, it will never be it will never be a rational number okay so a number in the form of p by q where q is not equal to 0 and where P and Q are integers. Right? Now, we are going to talk about properties of rational number. Okay? So, there are, we are going to talk about the operation, operational properties of rational number. So, first property is closer property. then comes commutative property then comes associative property then comes distributive property and 
this will be in this case there will be two two types one is over addition another one is over subtraction over subtraction means distributive property of rational number over addition distributive property of rational number over subtraction right now so first property we will discuss about is a closer property now what closer property this one this one we have learned in the case of integer remember that so in the case of integers we told that the addition of integers will be always integers subtraction of integers will be always so integers multiplication of integers will be always integers oh, in case of division yeah you will wonder in case of division whether it will happen or not so think and tell me so we will discuss here these all cases in the case of rational number so rational number so first property the addition for the addition so if we add two rational numbers so it's obvious that we are going to get a rational number only so suppose there are two rational numbers a and b and if we add them the result will be a rational number for example now if we add 2 by 3 and minus 5 by 3 right 2 by 3 and minus 5 by 3 so let us add so 3 2 minus 5 here we got 3 by minus 3 by 3 which is minus 1 so minus 1 is a rational number what about subtraction yeah for subtraction also if we subtract two rational number we will get a rational number only right if we subtract two rational number we will get a rational number only so 2 by 3 minus minus 5 by 3 so 2 by 3 plus 5 by 3 which is a 5 plus 2 7 7 by 3 so 7 by 3 is a rational <coughs> 7 by 3 is a rational number only okay so we So subtraction of two, uh, two rational numbers will be a rational number. So we say that addition of rational number is closed. Subtraction of rational number is closed. Now what about multiplication? If we multiply two rational number, obviously we will get a rational number only. Okay? But what about division? Will division follow the closer property or not? We will see this one now. So for the multiplication, for the multiplication, if we multiply two rational number, we will get a rational number only. Minus 10 by 9. So minus 10 by 9 is a rational number, right? Now, we say that the multiplication is closed and the rational number now for division in every cases you will find that the division follows but there is a one case what about if you divide a number by zero which is undefined which means which means division does not follow the closer property right now so we come to know that addition follows the closer property means the sum of two rational number will be a rational number then subtraction follows the 
closure property, sum of uh, difference of two rational numbers will be a rational number only. Multiplication follows the closure property, which means multiplication of two rational numbers will be a rational number only, but division does not follow because if you divide a number by zero, because zero is also a rational number, if you divide a, num zero, a number by zero, we will not get any result which is undefined. So division does not follow the closure property. Now let's come to the next property. The next property is commutative property. Now, you will see that there is a similarity between these two properties, commutative and associative. In the case of commutative, we will take two numbers, two rational numbers, and in the case of associative property, we will take three numbers. There is, but there is still difference. That's why we are taking two different properties. So in case of commutative property, so for each of the operation, mathematical operation, we will check these properties. So first comes the addition. Okay. So commutative property says it's about order. If you reorder rational numbers and add them, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, and then you see that whether the left hand side and the right hand side remains equal or not. If left hand side and right hand side doesn't remain equal, means that operation does not follow the commutative property. So, addition, so suppose there are two rational numbers A and B and we change the order now. We do it as B plus A. So will A plus B equal to B plus A or not? If it is equal, then it follows the commutative property. We will check it now. So let's take, uh, we will take a simple uh, small numbers and we will verify this property. So first we will take, let's in place of A, we take uh, 2 by 3 in place of B. Let's take minus 5 by 3 previously, which we are taking. So now first, we will see the left hand side, A plus B, right? A plus B is 2 by 3 plus minus 5 by 3. So 2 by 3 minus 5 by 3, which will be equal to minus 3 by 3, which is minus 1, right? Now we will take the RHS. RHS is here. B plus A. Right. B plus A means first we will write minus 5 by 3. I told you in the beginning the commutative properties is about reordering the rational numbers and then finding the values. So we are reordering means which means here the B is minus 5 by 3. So B will come first, means minus 5 by 3 will come first, then plus 2 by 3. So 3 minus 5 plus 2, so it's minus 3 by 3. Again we got the same, right? So here, left hand side is minus 1, but minus 1 and right hand side is also minus 1, which means addition follows the commutative property. Now what about subtraction? Will subtraction follow the commutative property? Okay, let's see that. So here also we'll reorder the values. Okay, for the case of subtraction, for the case of subtraction, A minus B should be equal to B minus A. I told you. Still, I am not sure whether A minus B will be equal to B minus A or not. Let us find it here. So, let us keep the values the same. Okay. And we will do the calculation now. Right. So, first, let us find A minus B. A minus B means 2 by 3 minus minus 5 by 3. 2 by 3 plus 5 by 3 means 7 by 
3. Now let us take the RHS. RHS 2 by, sorry, first we will write minus 5 by 3, right, because B is minus 5 by 3, minus 5 by 3 minus 2 by 3, so 3 minus 5 minus 2 minus 7 by 3, oh, it's not equal here, one is coming 7 by 3, another one is coming minus 7 by 3. Left hand side is not equal to right hand side. One is positive, one is values are same, but one is positive, one is negative, which means both are not equal. Which means subtraction does not follow the commutative property. Right. Now, next operation we will take, which is multiplication. <coughs> now, you can think yourself whether the multiplication will follow the commutative property or not. Multiplication. Okay, same thing. Reordering the digits and getting the result. A into B should be equal to B into A. Yeah. It will be equal, sure. Okay, LHS and then RHS minus 5 by 3 into 2 by 3 minus 10 by 3 and this will be also minus 10 by 3 which means multiplication follows the multiplication follows the commutative property. Right, because see that left hand side is equal to right hand side. Now let us come to the division. Whether the division will follow commutative property or not. Division. Which means A divided by B should be equal to B divided by A. Right? Are you not wondering whether they will be equal or not? Somehow I am sure that they will not be equal. Right? Let us take LHS. 2 by 3 divided by minus 5 by 3 and RHS minus 5 by 3 divided by 2 by 3. So this will be 2 by minus 5 and this will be minus 5 by 3 and 3 by 2. So this is minus 5 by 2. Now see that here it is 2 by minus 5 and here it is minus 5 by 2. It's very obvious that division will not follow the commutative property. Okay? So, commutative property only two op mathematical operations follows. One is the addition, another one is the multiplication. Division and subtraction does not follow the commutative property. Okay? So, next is the associative property. Now, Associative property, associative property is about regrouping the digits and finding the math and finding the value. So regrouping, so see that I am telling in commutative property I am telling reordering and here I am telling regrouping. So both are different thing, different thing. Now you will come to know why we are using two different properties. One is reordering, another one is regrouping. So keep in mind the difference between commutative property and associative properties. In the commutative property, we reorder the digits, and in associative property, we regroup the digits. So suppose, and here we take two values. So the uh, two values. And here we take three values. Remember that there are two differences. One, here we take one value, two values, here we take three values. Another difference, here we reorder the digits and here we regroup the digits. So suppose there are three rational numbers A, B, and C. And they are written in such a way that A plus B under bracket 
b plus c should be equal to a plus b in the bracket plus c for the case of addition this is for the case of addition okay so now look at here we are regrouping here first b and c we are adding and then we are adding to a and here on the right side we are adding first a and b and then we are adding the result into c right and for the subtraction you can check by yourself putting these values i'll just uh, go through in short for multiplication for multiplication and for division so if you compare this property with the previous one with the commutative property you will get an idea okay that whether which one will fall which which mathematical operation will follow or not <coughs> so a divided by b bracket divided by c now so if you compare this associative property with the previous one the addition and multiplication only two one now remember addition and multiplication will only follow the only follow the associative properties subtraction and division will not follow the subtraction and division will not follow the associative property you can put the value and you can check by yourself now you can consider it as a homework put the values and check whether which one is following and which one is not following okay that i'll tell you if you compare with commutative property you will see that addition and multiplication will only follow the associative property division and multiplication uh, division and subtraction will not follow the associative property okay and the last one is the distributive property okay the last distributive property we will see in the next class so what we learned today is the definition of rational number and two of the uh, three of the properties of the rational number okay so in rational number we learned that if a number is written in the form of p by q if any number can be written in the form of p by q and q should not be equal to 0 Rick, always remember that q should not be equal to 0 it's a very important and p and q are integers p and q are integers okay and closer property commutative property and associative property so closer property for addition for subtraction and for multiplication means addition subtraction and multiplication follows the closer property division does not follow then comes the commutative property only commutative property and associative property now remember the difference between commutative property and associative property commutative property is about reordering the digits and associative property is about regrouping the digits so and in commutative property only two digits and in associative property there will be three digits right so uh, the addition and multiplication remember addition and multiplication only follows the commutative property as well as the associative property but subtraction and division does not follow any of the property right so related to this you can uh, get the worksheet or uh, assignment which is uploaded in the ERP right okay thank you